It is hard to believe the Iowa caucuses are less than two weeks away, but it is what it is. Vivek Ramaswamy will not be making the uh, CNN uh, debate that is on January 10th, nor will he be a participant in the Donald Trump uh, town hall forum that Brett and Martha are hosting on this fine network the same night. Nevertheless, his push is on. He's got his own plans for Iowa. He joins us right now. Vivek, very good to have you. It's good to see you, Neil. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. I was reading that you've pulled ads out of Iowa and might have gotten that incorrect, but tell us where you are putting the emphasis in Iowa. Yeah, so look, I think a lot of the traditional media strategy is actually broken for candidates, Neil. The Iowa caucus is about grassroots activation, and so we're going to voters in a lot of non-traditional ways, digitally and otherwise. Even as it relates to media, I've done more podcasts than any other presidential candidate, probably all of the presidential candidates in history combined. And so we're going with a top podcaster for a live show with a live studio audience here in Des Moines, Iowa. And so I'm doing things a little bit differently. But I also think that's why the polls are dramatically off, Neil. I think we're going to deliver a major surprise. I would go so far as to call it a shock on January 15th. I think we have a shot at winning the Iowa caucus and certainly a clear path to shattering the expectations that have been set. Because a lot of the supporters of this campaign are first time caucus goers, people who have not been traditionally polled. And so we're doubling down and leaning into that strategy. And I think it's going to pay dividends not only on January 15th at the Iowa caucus, but hopefully when I'm the nominee to win the general election in a landslide. Because I think that's what we as a Republican Party need to do is bring more people into our movement who share our pro-American principles, but who we have not reached in the past. And I'm doing that at a scale that we haven't seen in our party. Nevertheless, when you do pull ads, you know how it goes. With it. People then start assuming, oh, he's in trouble or he's about to give up. I, I, th there might be no truth to that. But let me ask now, you. We've increased expenditures, actually. OK, or fine. Yeah. So let me ask you, if it doesn't turn out as you hope uh, in Iowa, what do you do then? Look, I expect we're going to shatter expectations in, in Iowa. Neil, I'm not a plan B person, but I'm in this for the long run for our country. And I'm also increasingly concerned this year that you see a system that has decided one way or another that they're going to keep Donald Trump out of contention. I'm deeply disappointed by what I see. I'm deeply alarmed by it. I'm the only candidate who said that I would remove myself from the ballots of either Maine or Colorado if Donald Trump's illegally removed from those ballots as well. But that being said, I think we are going to see an unprecedented series of events this year. And I think you're already seeing unprecedented events even late last year. And so I think that those who predict that they know how 2024 is going to turn out, I think, have badly missed the plot. I'm focused on doing the right thing for our country. I expect to be the nominee. And if I am the nominee, I expect to win the general election in a landslide and hopefully reunite this country, Neil, to take the America first agenda to the next level. And yes, that goes beyond just traditional Republicans. But the America First movement, I think, does have the potential to win this election in a landslide. And that's what I'm working to deliver. You know, you do stand out among your colleagues because you're the only one of whom Donald Trump has not said a bad thing to my memory at all. And it, it always conjures up images are, are you greasing the skids for something cynically? Have you been promised something? Are you trying to endear yourself to him? It's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Actually, the irony in this, Neil, is you look at the other professional politicians in this race, every one of them, from Chris Christie even to Ron DeSantis to Nikki Haley, they've been licking Donald Trump's boots for years for money and endorsements and, in Chris Christie's case, lobbying him. I haven't been, actually. Well, to be fair, I've been Chris Christie has not done it in boot. this campaign. So you're quite right. He was quite enamored yeah, exactly. of him years it's, ago. It's, so you're saying that well, well, at least that's you're what not I would that. say. That's what you're saying. <laughs> These yeah, these, these professional politicians, they wave in whatever direction the wind is blowing. Mm. In contrast for me, you look at this, look at the polls in Iowa and elsewhere. I'm runaway, the second choice voter. And so if Pete, Donald Trump weren't in this race, I'd be winning Iowa and close to a landslide if you look at some of those recent polls. So it would be easier for me if Donald Trump weren't in this race. But I stand based on principle. We got to do the right thing for the country. Voters in this country should be able to decide who their president is. That's not too much to ask. That's what the United States of America was founded on. And I do increasingly think, Neil, we live in a 1776 moment, a moment where we need to revive the ideals of that American revolution. That's what I think this year is about, is reviving those shared 1776 ideals. Now, I do think it's going to take a leader from the next generation to get us there. Thomas Jefferson, he was 33 years old when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. 
these revivals, they tend to be led by the next generation. I'd be the youngest president ever elected if elected. And I think that's going to be required to reach the next generation of Americans. And I can do that right. in this race in a way that nobody else can, taking our movement to the next level. You'd still be the youngest president if you tried again in four years. Neil, I don't know that our country is working with that luxury of time. If the interest payments on our national debt become the largest line item in our federal budget, we're in quicksand and I don't think we have a country left. I think it's going to take somebody with fresh legs and also a CEO in the White House. I'm working with zero based budgeting. That's how I'm going to run the federal government. Hmm. Fire 75 percent of those federal bureaucrats within my first term. Right. Taking that anti deep state America first agenda further than Donald Trump did. And I think if we don't do that in this next short window we have, I'm quite concerned we won't have the same country left. And so it's not about in my life. Sure, I could run for president in the future. I don't need to run for president at all. But I'm doing this out of my sense of duty to the country. And I don't think we're working with a lot of time left. And that's why I'm in this race. We'll watch closely. Vivek, good catching up with you. Vivek Ramaswamy, the uh, 2024 Republican presidential candidate. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.